it's a great honor to be invited to present for one of the From Local to Global workshop series organized by William Factory Small Business Incubator. I'm very happy to join a group of like-minded entrepreneurs, and I regard myself as one of you, as you will see from my background shortly. So my name is Olivia Lin Tan. I originally come from China. I came to United States in 2000 to finish my undergraduate study. And uh, then I got my master's degree in accounting uh, and worked for several regional firms in the United States and served business and individual clients from a wide, wide variety of industries, such as medical, technology, real estate, and et cetera. So um, after that, I, uh, decided to start my own entrepreneurial journey. So from day one, I built my own business totally on cloud. So I can work at any part of the world as long as I have internet access. And I can serve my clients from all over the world as long as they have internet access too. So it is real uh, example of digital business, isn't it? Disclaimer. So this presentation has been prepared for general information only and is not intended to provide and should not be relied on for tax, legal, or accounting advice. You should consult your own tax, legal, or accounting advisors based on your particular facts and circumstances before engaging in any transactions. And due to the time limitation and the complexity of international tax, in this short presentation, I will mainly cover some fundamental principles of international tax, give you a general idea of how it plays a role in your business and the importance of working with your team of international tax professionals. So firstly, international trade and international tax. I believe every everybody feel the impact of international trade in their daily life. So if you look at numbers below, in 1960, United States exported less than 26 billion and imported about 22 billion of goods and services the whole year. And if you look at April, 2019, US exported less than 206 billion and imported about 257 billion of goods and services in just one month. So thankful to the uh, thanks to the technology improvements in communication and the transportation, it made the world much smaller and contributed to the exponential growth of international trade. So why, why international trade? Uh, I, I believe it's very obvious. Uh, it helps to exchange of goods and services between two countries, uh, promote great efficiency and keep prices down, and stim stimulates innovation, generate better quality products and services. Uh, so I don't think I really need to elaborate on this. As a matter of fact, I just had a new client actually came in for uh, help with the business bookkeeping, but very interesting to know that he's in the electronic repairs in the sales business, uh, seem to be traditional business. However, he does online marketing reaching audience all over the world. And he imports repair parts from China for a lower cost. And thanks for, uh, to the modern efficient transportation and logistics, his clients can mail the electronics uh, to him from all over the world to Washington state to have them repaired in a timely fashion. So what is the central problem of international taxation? Uh, actually, it's the double taxation. So for a single international tra transaction, both countries uh, could possibly tax on this same transaction based on their own international tax rules, such as tax residency test uh, or income sourcing rules. So the study of international taxation 
really is the study of the rules that attempt to address the overlapping tax authority of sovereign countries. It's also the story of taxpayers' attempts to explore the gaps in those rules to their benefit. Now I'd like to uh, talk about a few fundamental principles used in international tax. So as you might know, US subjects its citizens on their worldwide income. It's not difficult to determine whether a taxpayer is or is not a US citizen for US tax purposes. Uh, when an uh, individual is taxed on worldwide income, it's awful it often de uh, depends on the definition of its residency. For corporation, the residence test for corporation is much, um, is much simpler than the test for individuals. Uh, a US corporation taxable on its worldwide income is usually a, is a corporation created or organized in the United States. The international transactions can be grouped into two broad categories, which is outbound and uh, inbound. The term outbound transactions refers to US residents and citizens doing business and investing abroad. The term inbound transactions refers to foreign taxpayers doing business and investing in the, Uni in the United States. The income sourcing rules uh, plays a very important role on determination of whether income is taxable to certain tax jurisdiction. Different, ta uh, different source rules apply to different type of income, such as interest income, dividend income, personal services, rental and royalty income, real property, personal property, and other gross income. The source rules apply to deductions too, when you have business expenses, such as interest expense, research and experimental expenditures and losses. Income tax treaties. Uh, US, the US has best network of tax treaties, which make, make it possible for Americans to obtain foreign tax rates and for foreign tax credit. So it uh, helps to prevent international double taxation, reduce US tax on resident of foreign countries and uh, work the, uh, um, the same way, recipro reciprocal uh, way to reduce ta taxes of US citizen or residents who received income from a treaty country. Now let's talk, uh, talk more about the outbound transaction. The United States taxpayers, uh, as we mentioned earlier, are subject to immediate tax on their worldwide income, irrespective of where that income is sourced. So for individual taxpayers, uh, if they are considered as US taxpayer, uh, the citizens and the residents of the US living abroad uh, they can um, take advantage of the foreign tax credit or foreign income exclusion to reduce their double taxation worldwide. For domestic entities, so besides those classified as pass-through entities, such as partnership or as corporations, which the income tax attributes and the income losses flow through to be taxed at the individual level. Uh, a separately taxed entity, such as C corporation, the residence of the entity is determined by the place where it is created or organized. So once the entity is determined to be a domestic entity, it is subject to tax on a worldwide basis. However, you could use foreign tax credits and uh, structuring your foreign business 
in a certain way to reduce the double taxation, just as uh, you could do as an individual. The inbound transactions really refers to US activities of foreign taxpayers. So non-US taxpayers often includes non-resident alien individuals uh, and also non-resident corporate entities, non-resident trust or non-resident estate. If you are considered as non-resident taxpayer under US tax law, then you are only taxable by the US on two uh, kinds of income. The first one is income source to the US. These are more investment income in nature. So often referred to as FDAP income. They are taxed on a gross basis at a flat rate of 30% or if there are treaties between the two countries, then you are possibly taxed at a lower treaty rate. Then the second kind of income is income sourced to US trade or business. So these income are taxed in the same manner as net income earned by a US resident. Uh, international tax provisions of the code provide little guidance as to what constitutes a US taxpayer? The standard for when a non-resident is considered to be engaged in a US, tax, a US trade or business has been developed by the courts over decades. So oftentimes the tax professionals has to look at the uh, court cases for guidance to determine whether the non-resident is considered to be engaged in a US trade or business. Uh, so you can see that the first kind of income is taxed on a gross basis. The second kind of income is taxed on a net basis, net income basis. Uh, comparing the foreign taxpayers and the US taxpayers, you will see that uh, overall the foreign taxpayers are taxed on a more limited scope comparing with worldwide tax of US taxpayers. how to work with uh, your international tax professionals. Uh, it's very important that you work with uh, tax professionals specialized in international tax. Uh, the first, uh, from the tax compliance pers perspective, uh, the there have, there's a hefty penalty for non-compliance associated with foreign information or reporting forms. So these forms are usually filed when you file your tax return. If you look at the penalties, uh, for example, for the FBAR form, uh, it is 10,000 for non-willful violation. Uh, for willful violations, it is the greater of 10,000 or 50% of the account balance. For form 8938, the penalty of for non-compliance is 10,000. Form 5471, the penalty is 10,000. Form 50 for 72, the penalty is 25,000. These are usually charged on an annual basis. So for every year you are not compliant, you have to pay that penalty. Tax planning is also very important. Um, I, it should be involved from the incorporation throughout the life of the business. So you can, uh, at time of in the incorporation, you, you should structure the business in a tax in efficient way from a worldwide standpoint. And you should select the best place, uh, the best state or country to incorporate your business. And always update your tax planning when there is tax law changes or when your business situation changes. Now I'm going to give a detailed, detailed example about how uh, it's more from the outbound transaction side uh, to explain how uh, tax planning is important, why tax uh, planning is important. So this is regarding st uh, structuring foreign operations. So priorly historically, uh, activities of foreign corporations including foreign subsidiaries 
have been exempt from US tax purpose, subject to the exceptions, such as subpart uh, sub F income, PFIX, et cetera. So if you are a foreign corporation or foreign non-grantal trust, which is considered as non-US taxpayer, then income earned by this non-resident entity, entity from foreign jurisdictions, uh, the US tax usually can be avoided even if all of the underlying shareholders are US taxpayers under the default US tax rules. So it creates a system incentivize income shipping efforts. So business with foreign activities, they would rather incorporate overseas in order to delay US tax imposition. Uh, because the, you, at the individual level, the US shareholders are taxed when they receive a dividend distribution from a foreign corporation and hoping for a repatriation holiday, which allows funds to come back for a reduced tax rate. However, on the corporate level, uh, the income usually is, can be deferred. And the uh, corporation, the foreign corporation uh, is not, uh, US tax uh, is not to be paid on their foreign income. Uh, but uh, things changed after the tax cut and the job Jobs Act. Uh, now with the implementation of GEARTY, uh, which is finalized on July 20th, 2020, the ability to defer income earned by foreign corp has been reduced significantly. Also the US corporate tax rates uh, reduce, is reduced to 21% of flat rate. So now, Incorporating foreign activities here in the United States has become significantly more appealing, irrespective of whether foreign activities are separately incorporated in a foreign jurisdiction. So if the foreign activities are separately incorporated, the guilty is taxed at a much lower rate for corporate shareholders. Or if the foreign activities are undertaken without a foreign corporation, or uh, like foreign branch operations or operations by our foreign flow through, then the FDII benefits are available if, if activities are undertaken by a domestic corporation uh, because the 37.5% uh, of FDII deduction results in an immediate federal, federal tax rate of 13.125%. So in summary, priority, it would be more, it might be more beneficial if you incorporate your foreign activities overseas conducted uh, through a foreign corporation. Uh, now, after the law changes, uh, it might be beneficial to incorporate your foreign activity here in the United States, uh, regardless of whether you incorporate your foreign activities in that foreign jurisdiction. So lastly, uh, we're going to talk about the challenges, the opportunities uh, faced by international law, international tax law. Uh, the US international tax laws uh, were created in 1939. So it is really old. Um, the reality is the US rules for sourcing and the taxing effectively connected income haven't changed much to reflect the reality of doing business in the 21st century. Uh, now the business, uh, the business in more uh, online basis, it's, it's called a digital business. So if you look at the way people are conducting business right now, um, see the internet sales, remote services, SaaS, which is software as a service, uh, PAS, IAS, cloud computing transactions. Uh, this way of doing business that don't exist before. So in order to catch up with the changes, how the uh, current currently business are conducted, IRS made a 
for example, I also made an attempt uh, in August 20, uh, 2019, the IRS issued a proposed regulations uh, providing guidance on how to characterize, char characterize cloud computing transactions. However, as of now, the proposed regulation is not finalized and many questions uh, left unanswered. So with the situation of lack of guidance from uh, uh, old international tax system, uh, pa past a few decades, international tax professionals, uh, attorneys, um, they are, uh, what they do is they follow landmark court cases dealing with digital businesses or writing letters to the IRS requesting tax guidance based on, individ uh, on business specific situations. Uh, and the responses from IRS is usually called, uh, is called a private letter ruling. Um, so even with the challenges and uh, the challenges, uh, there are still lots of strategic international tax plannings are done every year. Uh, so I would like to uh, present a quote from a, uh, international tax professionals. Uh, says, the more informed you are about offshore tax planning, the better equipped your business will be to compete in the global economy. So lastly, uh, we, we have a stronger network with international tax professionals in the US and overseas. So we could leverage our partnership to solve various complex, uh, various complex problems with a quick turnaround time. So if your business has accounting or tax need, needs overseas, we're happy to refer you to our business partners overseas. So these are the two uh, international tax accountants uh, we work with uh, in other countries, one in China and one in India. Uh, oftentimes, we work, we meet and work together on projects for our international clients. Okay, so that is the presentation for today. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, my contact information is provided on the last page, last slide. Uh, thank you again. And uh, I wish you have a great day. Thank you, bye. Thank you.